Welcome back. I'm going to show you how to cut down paper from a larger size, the size that it's purchased from, to smaller sizes. And this is a speedball pack of 20 sheets, 90 pound or 245 grams per square meter weight paper, and the dimension is 8.5 by 11 inches. For the monotype plates that I'm uh, wanting to print, um, I want to print lead prints, and that means that the image area extends all the way to the edge of the paper, so I'm going to cut my paper the same size as the printing plate, so 4 by 6 inches. So the first step in doing that is figuring out your uh, maximum paper usage. To figure out the paper usage, I drew out the dimension of the main paper, which is 8.5 inches wide by 11 inches tall. And I did two different versions, A and B, to see which is going to give me the best or the highest number of cut sheets of 4 by 6 inch paper. With the 4 inch dimension along the height, I find I'm able to fit two pieces of 4 by 6 inch paper. If I put the 4 inch dimension along the width of the paper, however, I can fit two at the top and then rotate the 4 by 6 and fit a third sheet uh, at the bottom of the paper. So option B is the better option for our purposes because we'll be able to achieve three sheets of cut four by six inch paper per eight and a half by 11 sheet as opposed to two sheets. The tools I'm going to use are a self-healing cutting mat, a metal non-slip ruler, and a sharp exacto knife. For cutting paper, you can also use a utility knife if it's a very sharp blade. So this blade I can see is nicked a little bit at the top, so I'm going to snap off the edge. To do that, I'm going to remove the protective end cap. So that snaps off. I'll extend the blade to the first score mark, insert the blade into the notch on the protective end cap, and then snap it going away from me. And if you have a pair of glasses to put on, I recommend doing so to protect your eyes in case this were to um, fly to the side there. Now it's important when you have sharps to dispose of these properly, so either keeping a sharps disposal container or to wrap it in masking tape before throwing it into the bin. Whenever you're handling clean printing paper, you also want to make sure your hands are clean and your work surface is clean. And this printing paper has about the same type of surface on both the front and the back side. Some printing paper will have a, a difference in the front and back side, with the front side being irregular and pebbly, and the back side having a slight grid pattern on it from the screen in the mold and duct as the paper is being made. I'm going to flip the paper front side down and measure how I'm going to be cutting using my ruler. So for this piece, I'm going to be fitting two four inch pieces and a four inch height, six inches wide here. Using a pencil, I'm going to make very light marks and a very small mark at the four inch and the eight inch dimension. I'll move down a few inches, carefully lining up the zero on the edge of the paper, go down to four inches, a light mark, down to eight inches and another light mark. And I like to do this three times along the amount that I'm cutting, sometimes more if it's a longer dimension. And now in the other direction for six inches. You'll want to be strategic in which cut you make first. So since the six inch cut is going to be all the way across the paper. I'm going to do that one first. Because if I were to do this one first, that intersection there, I may extend over that intersection and end up with a notch cut out of my third piece of paper. So I'm lining the ruler up next to those small pencil marks that I created. And I like to line it up so there's just a little bit of space visible to account for the width of the blade. When cutting, I'm going to use firm pressure down with my non-dominant hand. And this is a fairly small piece of paper, so my hand is able to give firm pressure all the way across that length. I'm going to use firm pressure down 
um, moderate though, so not too light, not too heavy, and allowed the sharpness of the blade to start to cut through the paper. And notice how I'm scoring the paper several times until it's fully cut, rather than forcing the blade through all at once. Set this to the side. And this process then will be repeated as many times as needed until all of the paper is cut down to size. So this piece has not been pre-measured, and I'm going to show you how to cut using the ruler that's built into your cutting mat. The corner here is the zero mark. I'm going to keep the ruler over the portion of the paper that I want to keep. And you'll notice how the edge here is hidden. So I'm going to slide the paper down along the zero so that I'm able to see where the number four is. And this is where I'm going to line my ruler up on the top. And then I can count one, two, three, four along the bottom. And just like with the small pencil marks, I'm lining the ruler up so the same amount of space is given between the ruler and the line on both the top and the bottom to account for the width of the blade. Now I'll slide the paper back to the zero and up to reveal the numbers, lining the paper up on both the uh, vertical and horizontal alignment edges. And now I'm going over to the six inch mark. So three pieces of paper cut the same size. And I like to keep the scraps to use for testing ink color or making small drawings, anything I can think of using these for.